Hi everyone, this is Andrew Tsai and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be looking at these two MacBook Airs, which look virtually identical on the outside, but on the inside they perform radically differently. So on my left I have the Intel MacBook Air, which was released in April 2020 with the 1.1GHz dual-core Intel Core i3 with 8GB of RAM, and this is the base model. And on my right I have the M1 Apple Silicon MacBook Air, which was released in November 2020. And through some simple tests, I'm going to show you that the Apple Silicon laptop is far, far superior to the Intel MacBook Air, even though they look completely the same. This is despite the fact that when this Intel laptop was released in April 2020, it was getting very, very good reviews. For example, in this Guardian article, they were calling it the near-perfect consumer laptop. However, I would say that it would be impossible to recommend this laptop anymore given that we have this alternative Apple Silicon. And I hope I'm going to be able to demonstrate that in a couple of very simple tests. I'm viewing this as an approach from a gamer as well. And I think that games also offer the best kind of performance test and benchmark. So I'm going to fire up a couple of games and demonstrate the quite vast difference between the way these two systems perform. So the very first game that I'm loading is Baldur's Gate 3. So on my left I have the Intel version of the game, and on my right I have the game running on the M1 chip. And this version of the game is the one that's just been released at the time of recording. It's patch number 3, which brings a few Rosetta optimizations for the M1 Mac. So that means that there's some optimizations for the game, but not full native optimization yet. So this can get even better as time goes on. On my left I have the standard Intel version of the Mac port of the game, and this performs substantially differently. So I'm just going to go very quickly through the settings that I'm using. So on the Intel MacBook, I'm using much lower resolution. So I'm going 1024 by 640, and I've turned down the quality settings to very low. And on the right, I'm using kind of half the native resolution, which is still really high resolution for a laptop. And I'm doing medium quality here. So I'm just going to create the same character and enter the game at the same time. So even basic things like cutscenes on the left hand side here, it's not even loading, it's a bit of a slideshow, whereas very smooth on the right. I'm going to skip this cutscene. And we're just going to compare this uh, opening starting area. So obviously on the right hand side, this is loaded right into the game very fast. And we've got a pretty playable frame rate. So if you can see on the the corner here, as I'm running this through Steam, it's showing an overlay of about 36, 37 frames per second. If you can hear fan noise, that's because the MacBook Air with the Intel chip does have active cooling here, and I can feel it, it's hot and it's blowing out very hot air here, and it's making quite a relatively loud noise. And of course, the Apple M1 Silicon Max completely fanless, no noise at all. So you can see straight away that there's this huge difference in frame rate. So here we've, we're running something much higher resolution, and it's going at 40 frames per second in much better visual quality. And on the left here, we're getting about 10 frames, 7 frames per second, and it is barely functioning at all. It's like a huge difference in the, the quality of the scene here. And this is just a testament to the power of the M1 chip and how much Apple have optimized and improved. And this is despite the fact that this is running an ARM chip and, and translating the x86 software through the ARM instructions and producing this wonderful gameplay performance. So okay. it's extremely hard to recommend this Intel chip, it's kind of groaning under the pressure of the of the game and how much it's it's pushing through. Whereas on the right here, this is just running this smoothly. I can feel the keyboard here. It is barely breaking a sweat, whereas this is very, very hot. It feels very hot. Um, and we're if you just compare the frame rate, and we're not even comparing the same resolution here, this is the absolute lowest possible setting. And on the right here, we've got a much higher resolution and it's not even breaking a sweat really. It's very hard to recommend the Intel MacBooks anymore. Their thermal performance 
the performance of gaming, the performance of every aspect, battery life, cooling, heat, longevity, all that stuff makes a huge, huge difference. I'm just going to play through a bit more just to demonstrate this is just not a one-off. So I'm trying to put it through the paces here. So I'm going to enter the same areas, go to this transition, and we, we see that's very smooth, and this is not doing very well at all. We'll go to the bit where we meet our first companion. See, I think this is sort of unplayable. I mean, if we lower the resolution more, we could possibly play the game, I'd say, technically, but it would not be a good experience. So this is the first bit with the, the very first cutscene where we meet our first companion. And this is really starting to throttle and it's not doing very well. So we look at this, this is basically turned into a slideshow. And uh, this one's running, no sweat, 60 frames per second, 15, 18 frames in the cutscene. I can hear these fans really going hard now. So it's amazing to me that these two computers released in the same year, same chassis, same price, have completely different performance when it comes to this type of game. And it's not just this kind of game too, I'm gonna to compare another game too. So now I'm gonna be running Minecraft. So here are the video settings that I'm using. They are identical. Render distance 12 chunks, max frame rate unlimited, VSync off, everything else exactly the same. And we're just gonna do a comparison of the frame rates between them. I've loaded the exact same world, and I'm going to show you the difference between these two games. So this one on the right, the Apple Silicon Mac, feels very smooth, and this one on the left, very jittery. Let's turn on the frame rate counters. And here we can see that the Intel graphics chip has been used. Here is the Apple M1 chip running on metal. And here we have the frame rate, so that's 30 frames, 30, 28 frames per second. And here we're running at 108, 120 frames per second. So if we start looking around, we can see quite a vast difference. And let's, uh, let's try to make this very fair. I'm gonna press jump on both, looking down, around. A huge difference in frame rate. So here we're running nine, 10 frame rates after elevating ourselves slightly. And here we're still going at 114, 118 frames per second. Now, obviously I know that it's possible for me to install some optimizations, um, some mods for Minecraft to make this go faster, but I just wanna show what native Minecraft looks like compared with the Intel version and the Apple Silicon version. And of course, if you can hear that in the background, that's the fan noise from the MacBook Air Intel 2020. It's roaring, it's hot, and it's uncomfortable. Whereas here, we've got a cool, smooth machine running very, very fast. Let's run a different world and see if we can push this a bit harder. So I've run this benchmark before. I'm just going to load the world now and do a comparison between these two machines. So this is a specific benchmark type map which has a lot going on and it's kind of designed to show you the difference between computers running complex parts of the game. So obviously there's a huge amount going on here, it's changing the time, lots of blocks moving back and forth. I don't really play Minecraft so I'm not sure what's exactly what's going on but uh, I can definitely tell that there's a huge difference in performance. So obviously we've loaded this side already and it's loaded properly. And here we are really, really struggling. So I'm just gonna load up the actual frame rate counters. So here we're showing a frame rate and you know, 20, 23 frames per second is not great, but it's actually perfectly playable. Whereas here we're getting literally two frames per second, one frame per second, completely unplayable. I mean, here we can still look around the screen on the right, 
on the Apple Silicon version of Minecraft and it's very, very smooth. Here we are really struggling. And you know, this is really surprising how good the Apple Silicon Mac is, considering that these laptops are the same price and they're still available to buy right now. And it's surprising me as well that Apple are still going to continue to pump out Intel MacBook Airs and MacBook Pros, etc., um, for another two years. And um, I don't think there's any reason why you would buy an Intel MacBook versus an Apple Silicon. The difference is literally night and day. The performance levels of Minecraft is just one benchmark for how the computer will run. Every other category, the Apple Silicon surpasses the Intel Mac, battery life, heat, speed, etc. So there is one reason why you might want to continue to use Intel MacBooks, and that's because you need compatibility with certain applications which only run on Intel Macs, or you need to boot camp into Windows 10, which only the Intel Mac will support at the moment, and use Windows applications through another bootcamp partition. And those are all very valid reasons. However, if you can find all the compatible apps that you ever need on the Apple Silicon Mac, then this is a far, far superior laptop. As days go by, more and more software is getting native ports that work on the Apple Silicon Mac. At the moment, if you want to run older Mac applications which aren't supported by the native M1 ARM chip, then it's currently translated through a process called Rosetta, which is what the both of those games are running. Even though it's going through that Rosetta translation process, it's still performing far, far better than the Intel chip. So if you can find the compatible applications that you want to use, then it's going to be much, much better to use the Apple Silicon Mac. More and more applications are being ported and you'll find ARM versions of things like Chrome, and World of Warcraft and other applications will run natively on the Apple M1 Silicon chip. I thoroughly recommend the M1 Apple Silicon Max over any Intel processor laptops that Apple produce in the future. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next tech video.